I march forward to the victory of our people. The revolution in South Africa is guaranteed that under the EFF, this country will be the better. Julius Malema is a force to be reckoned with in the South African political landscape. He has firmly established himself as a household name. Often labelled a firebrand, the 43-year-old is the founder of the Economic Freedom Fighters, an anti-establishment, Marxist, pan-Africanist party that focuses sharply on the rights of black South Africans and accuses the leading party of neglecting this core population. You are self-destructing and you will have yourself to blame. If you listen carefully to EFF's election messages, the party doesn't spend much time attacking the ANC. Instead, it makes popular promises to double grant payments, expropriate land, create jobs and open borders. One consistent focus of the EFF is the rights of black South Africans, leading them to continually accuse the ruling party of failing to serve this key demographic. EFF has succeeded in exposing the hypocrisy of the ANC to the South African population. Malema is particularly controversial for his radical and sometimes violent political statements and his advocacy for policies that would convert lucrative privately owned mines into government property. His ideas on nationalizing gold and platinum mines have not been well received by South Africa's business elite. No iron ore or manganese is going to leave Zanzibar. We want you to beneficiate here. He also advocates for the redistribution of land owned by the white minority to black South Africans, a central issue for his party. The EFF rejects the current land restitution program as a mechanism for land reform. Let us come together and agree on this noble, historic and human call to expropriate land without compensation for equal redistribution. Malema has stated that with a parliamentary majority, the EFF would amend Section 25 of the Constitution to allow land redistribution without compensation. This would result in 50% of the land being handed over to black people within the first five years of EFF governance. The EFF would prioritize women and young people in its allocation of land use rights. Additionally, the party plans to introduce restrictions on foreign land ownership, aiming to address what it sees as the hoarding of land by multinationals and billionaires. Malema has been accused of using hate speech against the country's white population. He was found guilty of hate speech twice, in 2010 and 2011. First for comments about the woman who accused former President Jacob Zuma of rape, and then for singing a controversial song. Despite this, he continues to appeal to young people both in South Africa and across the continent. His supporters appreciate his combative rhetoric, and he remains an inspirational orator. His unwavering focus on the rights of poor black South Africans has earned him their admiration. However, there is one issue where young black South Africans and Malema disagree. Immigration and foreign policy. Spread lies that the EFF will encourage illegal immigration and will immediately open our borders. It's not true. There is no border that will be opened immediately. Malema has taken a unique stance on immigration from African countries. While other parties, responding to rising xenophobia, advocate for tighter immigration controls, Malema has pledged to repeal policies that restrict the free movement of Africans. This position confuses some of his staunch supporters, as he is a radical who prioritizes black South Africans, but simultaneously advocates for open borders and prioritizes other African nationals. Because we have a duty to unite the whole of Africa. The economic freedom fighters plan to expand their influence across the continent, advocating for a united Africa under a single government. They also encourage their members to open their doors to victims of xenophobic attacks at home. The EFF envisions Africa as a borderless continent with one federal government, one federal army, and one currency, a vision that would make a pan-Africanist like Kwame Nkrumah proud. There won't be a person without documents Everybody in South Africa will be documented, whether they came here for whatever reason. However, this vision overlooks the reality that the current success of some African countries is due to their higher level of development compared to others. 
This disparity could lead to a situation where citizens from densely populated, underdeveloped countries migrate to more developed, less populated ones. The poverty in some African countries is not due to a lack of opportunity or freedom of movement across the continent. Factors such as poor economic policies, political instability, terrorism and war play significant roles. Additionally, issues like lack of property rights, corruption and mismanagement of public funds contribute to the problem. An open border policy works in Europe because those countries are equally developed, and the EU enforces strict standards against bad governance and dictatorship. In contrast, many African leaders ignore the atrocities committed by dictators on the continent. Although citizens of African countries may share a skin colour, there are vast cultural differences that could hinder mutual tolerance. While regional integration through trade and investment involving collaborative efforts among neighbouring countries, governments and people is feasible, uniting Africa under a single state is impractical. Malema and his party argue that it should not be within South Africa's laws and practices to criminalise, arrest or deport Africans from the diaspora who seek to visit and find a home in South Africa. We are committed to Pan-Africanism. We are committed to regional integration, but that does not mean that will encourage illegal and undocumented immigration. He added that it is unjust for these Africans to face such treatment from a black government when they return to their origins and roots. However, this policy has led many of his supporters to denounce the One Passport for All initiative. While Malema's rhetoric highlights underlying racial and class tensions, he has shown an ability to maintain control over his supporters and generally prevent outbreaks of violence. But does he really want to be the president of South Africa? Every election season, he does something highly controversial that angers his supporters. This has led many to believe that he prefers the role of an opposition leader. If he were elected and had to govern South Africa, he would be forced to deliver on his promises and would face the same harsh criticism that South Africans and corporations direct at the ruling party. Critics have also mocked his well-documented taste for flashy cars, gold watches, and other trappings of wealth, often pointing to his associations with controversial figures like Mazzotti. In 2015, a court dismissed money laundering charges against him due to delays. If he rises to power, these allegations will resurface. The prospect of success seems to give him cold feet every election season. Radical black South Africans want Malema to be president. However, the country's poor and lower income citizens who hold the power to decide who governs do not seem inclined to support him as their president at this time.